Now, let's just cover some of the wrong reasons to go soul winning. Um, you know, number one is, you know, fear of wrath or fear of cursing from God. And, and I'll, I'll show you this verse here in Galatians. But see, I, don't, I do not believe that if you obey God, you'll be blessed. And if you disobey God, you'll be cursed. Um, now, I do believe there is a blessing that comes with obeying God, but not the same blessing and cursing that is referred to in the Old Testament that a lot of people will turn to to try and guilt you or scare you into serving God and saying that, you know, if you don't give, if you don't read your Bible, if you don't win souls, then you're under the curse of God and God is angry with you and, you know, all that sort of um, thing like that. I do not believe that applies to us as believers and why let's turn to let's sh i'll show you in galatians 3 but let's read from verse 9 it says so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful abraham for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse so you're under the curse if you are of the works of the law for it is written cursed is everyone that continue continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Now let me ask you, if we're cursed for disobeying God, then who's blessed? Because the Bible says here that if you, if you, if you, want, to be, if you want to not be cursed, you have to continue in all things. So it, it's sort of like assurance of salvation. You know how people will say, oh, you'll know them by their fruit? And they'll say a good tree bears good fruit and a bad tree bears bad fruit. Well, then my question is, well, who's a good tree? Because I have bad fruit. So if, that's, if, that, if that is meant to be a thought that comforts me and shows me that I am saved, it's not very comforting, right? Because the verse is proving to me that I'm, I'm a bad tree. So it, it can't have anything to do with salvation because salvation has nothing to do with our works. And just here, if the blessing of God is by, is by works, who, who then has the blessing of God? Not me, because I do not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Now let's continue. But that no, no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. Right? So our salvation is not by works. But look, he says, the just shall live by faith. So we don't only uh, are saved by faith, but our standing with God and how we live is by faith. And the law is not of faith. So he's saying, if you are trying to get the blessing of God and the right standing with God by the law, you're not getting it by faith. The law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So if you want to have a right standing and be blessed with God by the law, then you need to be doing it. If you're not, you're not going to get the blessing that way. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Amen to that. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So you see the blessing and the cursing is not by works. The blessing and the cursing is by faith. If you do not believe, you're going to be cursed. And that was, that's what hell is. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have that right standing with God. You're no longer under the curse of the law because Christ was made a curse for us. So this is not a reason why we should win souls because we are, have fear of, of the wrath of God. We have fear of the cursing of God. Now, what do we, what should we fear? Right? Let's just go down here. But what, sh what should we fear from God? Verse 6, Hebrews 12. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh with, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. 
So, you know, we ought to fear God, but it's a different sort of fear, isn't it? You know, it's not the fear that God is going to disown us, that God is going to disfellowship us, that God is going to curse us and doesn't want to bless us anymore, that he doesn't love us anymore. That's not the fear that we should have when we want to obey God and we want to do the right thing. But this is the sort of fear we should have. We should have a reverent fear of God that if we don't do what God commands us, he's going to correct us. You know, and as, as his children, you know, the, the world, unbelievers might get away with things and, you know, they're going to get punished in hell for all eternity for that. But God is going to see to it that, you know, we are corrected in whatever way, you know, because we don't know how God often corrects us. But, you know, we want to strive to be obedient because you don't want to constantly be under the chastening hand of God. You won't be under, the, under God's curse, but God may have to make you feel a bit uncomfortable to get you to do what he wants you to do. What's another wrong reason? You know, obviously, if, you, if you're going soul winning to, to try and work for your salvation, that's a wrong reason to, to go soul winning. Um, if you are working in order to be saved, and if you think that, you need to talk to me because you may not be saved. Um, so uh, that is not a good reason to go soul winning in order to work for your salvation. We are not saved by works. Uh, what's another bad reason to go soul winning? Number three, fear of man. You know, going soul winning because you're trying to please either me or please somebody else, you know, or you're worried about what other people will think of you. Now, I will never force you to go soul winning. I will never say, you know, you're not welcome here unless you go soul winning or, you know, you can't read the Bible or pray unless you're soul winning. Um, because I don't want to promote a spirit of you just doing it because you have to do it to do something else. You know, I, I want you to go soul winning and God wants you to go soul winning because you love him. Because you want to do it, not because you're forced to do it. I mean, forced service is not love. And I don't think God wants us to do that. And I don't think God would want me to lead this church in a way where it encourages you to do that. So I will never force you to go soul winning. You know, I, even when I take people uh, as my silent partner, I will never force you to, to knock the door or pressure you to do it. You can just come along as a silent partner and just listen and, and see me fumble and stutter and embarrass myself. That's fine, and you can learn from me what to say and what not to say. Um, but, you know, don't go soul winning for fear of man, what other people think. Um, you know, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't go soul winning. You know, none of these reasons should stop you from going soul winning. You should go soul winning anyway, but hopefully today you get the right perspective and get the right reasons for why you should go soul winning. And not just say, oh, you know, I've got the wrong reasons, so I'm not going to go soul winning at all. No, get the right reasons and then go soul winning. Um, well, what's another reason, another bad reason for why you go soul winning? Uh, number four is because you feel like it. And I think it's, it's, very, it's not very sound if the reason why you're going soul winning is based on how you feel that day. Because that means you'll go soul winning when you feel like it, but when you don't feel like it, you won't go soul winning. So don't make that the reason why you go soul winning, because... More often than not, you won't feel like going soul winning. I mean, how many of us, you know, w wakes up in the morning and just thinks, you know, I want to go soul winning. I want to go and talk to people that I've never met before and, and have that uncomfortable conversation. And hopefully, you know, nobody, none of us think that way. But, you know, to me, I don't know if no, this is a good analogy because maybe it's just me. But I, I think soul winning is like taking a shower because for me, I always like put off going to have that shower because it's just something I have to do, right? But after I take that shower, you, you feel so good being in there, right? And you feel so good after you come out clean. I think soul winning is the same way. You never feel like doing it, but once you've gone, do you ever regret going? You never regret going. And, and it's great being out there. And I'll go into a couple of those reasons why later on. But what my point is, you know, don't base why you go soul winning on how you feel. Because let me tell you, if you do, you're probably not going to go. Because you're going to wake up on that Saturday and if you base uh, going soul winning on how you feel, you're not going to go because you're not going to feel like going. You know, and that's why we come together here because we want to encourage each other to win the souls and to get involved. Um, and you know, so, sometimes people will talk about, well, how do I you know, grow my desire to go soul winning? Because I'm going soul winning and I don't feel like doing it. So how do you explain these, these emotions? Well, think about it, right? When, when you get saved, you've got your flesh and you've got your spirit. And the reason why we sin is our flesh. You know, that's why we, we don't want to do things. We're lazy and we, you know, we don't want to serve God. 
But what about our spirit? Remember we read in 2 Corinthians 5, it talks about the new man. All things have become new. You know, this new man cannot sin. This new man walks in the spirit. This new man always wants to do what's right. So if, we have, if we're saved and we have that new man and we have this desire to serve God and to be a follower of Christ, as Paul was talking about, why then is that de desire not that strong? Well, it's because we have the flesh. So what you have to realize when you, when you don't desire to go soul winning, it's not that you have to grow in this desire. I don't know if I'm explaining it that perfectly, but you don't grow in this desire. It's because you're walking in the flesh. That's what you have to realize because if you were walking in the spirit, you would always have the desire. You'd always have the zeal. You'd always have the passion. It's, you don't grow it by getting more desire in a sense. You just have to do less of the flesh and more of the spirit. And as you grow and you walk in the spirit, the perfect desire that God has given us in that spirit will start to come out. So what you have to realize that is, you know, if you don't feel like coming to church, you don't feel like reading your Bible, you don't want to think of it as like, oh, you know, how do I, how do, I do it? even though I don't have this desire, you have to realize, you know, I'm in the flesh. This is my flesh that doesn't want to do it because my spirit does want to do it. 